Welcome back to Decaf Math. So today, let's talk about functions. Funk. Shins. What a weird word, right? Functions. This topic was requested by a viewer here on this channel, so hello, and I hope that you find this helpful. Um, I didn't have a lot to work with because I have no idea what class they're taking, if they're taking anything, and in what context they wanted to go over functions, but I thought I would just start this conversation with the basics, and feel free to comment down below if you want me to go into this further, um, or which parts, if you want me to jump to a certain part, but otherwise, I'll just keep going with this, um, as I feel inspired. So, functions in general, this is really exciting because usually they're introduced in algebra for the first time, give or take, um, but it's like a new layer of logic that we can use. So a lot of times I'll say that math is a language, a lot of people say this, um, you need to take time to learn the language like you would any other language, um, but it's also logic. And this gives us a way to kind of focus on inputs and outputs and what happens in relationships. So, uh, the big picture idea, let's focus on the logic behind it first, and then we'll get into like notation and stuff. But the idea is you take an input. You can pick your input, okay? Um, as long as it doesn't break the math itself, like you can't divide by zero and stuff, but we'll get into this. Uh, more later, but you take an input and your function does its thing to it. It funks. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Funk. So the function takes your input, does its stuff, and it gives you an output. That corresponds to this input. That's it. That's literally it. So you pick the input and then notice that your output Um, and you'll keep doing that through um, algebra all the way through calculus 
this and beyond so functions is a huge huge topic but this is the key idea okay so in general you can define your function or just kind of represent your function in terms of um, the rule itself like what to do okay so my function could be like I'm gonna take an object flip it upside down and send it to Mars that's it <laughs> I don't know that would be weird but everything would end up on Mars right so I could input a chair I would flip the chair upside down and then send it to Mars so my output would be my chair that's upside down at Mo in Mars so I just take another object I flip it upside down and I send it to Mars that would be my output so of course we're gonna do this mathematically and you can represent your function as the actual thing that you're gonna do to it um, so you can just say like I'm gonna define it as I'll write the math notation here in a second but you can define it either as the rule or you can think of it as a set of inputs and outputs together that are paired based on what you put in and what you get out. So one input, another output, input, output, input, output, right? So chair and upside down chair and Mars, like that. Lemon and upside down lemon and Mars, whatever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you can either write it as pairs of inputs and outputs together, or you can think of the function as the actual rule itself for what to do with your inputs. Um, the thing about writing it in terms of a set, though, is sometimes that set is a finite set, so you know exactly what to do with certain, certain inputs, um, but sometimes you, it's an infinite set, and so you don't necessarily write it this way, you just write it algebraically. So, let me show you the notation for the algebraic way. So usually, of course, as you might expect, if we're doing algebra, we're going to work with variables. So usually we'll write something like f of x equals, and then something with x. So I could write like x squared plus 3. This is basically your function. It's a rule. So I'm not doing the set notation for this. I'm going to just write the rule. So the components of this notation is that f is my function itself, so it's a function, and um, let's see, so this is a function of x, so x is my input, and then whatever I feed it, so this tells me my function is of x, so f itself is not a variable, so you're not multiplying, this isn't f times x, it's f of x, this together means a function of x, which tells you that this thingy is my input, and this side tells me what to do with that input, this side tells me square square the input then add 3 that's what this is so uh, for those of you who like to think of things in terms of like sentences or concepts rather than all this like if you just zone out with variables and stuff like that this is what it means it's saying take your input square it at 3 and then that's my output that's what my output would be. So if I were to say, so this is the general rule. So this works for like any input. So this is how we would define it. But if I specifically wanted to find, for example, f of 1, so I can give values for x. So this input now, as far as um, variables go, the input is going to be and my output is going to be f of x and my function is my f how I define it, right? so f of 1 in this example is just literally plugging in 1 for x because my 1 is my input and the statement says I'm going to square that number and add 3 so that is 1, 1 squared is 1 plus 3 equals 4 so in this case, 
my input is one input is one out is four and like I said if we pair them together we can do one comma four for example and study some cool things about this this function if we actually um, make ordered pairs if you've learned about uh, graphs um, otherwise don't worry about this part just understand that we're taking an input we're putting it in we're um, applying our function to it and getting an output and so f of one here would be four and you can do that with any value just be careful to really stick with the rule so um you know you can't break the math from there you can do f of negative two for example is you square your input so you have to do the parentheses negative two squared plus three so negative two negative two squared is positive four plus three is seven so you still need to be careful with the arithmetic but remember as long as you follow that rule i'm inputting negative two and i'm going to square it and add three that's it it's as simple as that so you can work with all kinds of functions algebraic functions here we can do absolute values we can do our trig functions and that's what we mean by trigonometric functions um you just input an x and you do whatever function and then you get an output so again as long as each input has a clear output we're basically talking about functions here okay so one other thing that i wanted to point out is that i know we're kind of doing videos in like a weird order but i'm just kind of going by what i'm inspired by but if we have something like f of x plus h so the thing is when we did difference quotients um if you want to check out that video but that's actually more along the lines of pre-calculus but uh conceptually this is the same idea now the reason like the reason i like to write you know if we have a function let's say negative x cubed minus 5x now the confusing thing about this is that a lot of people are like wait what's f of x plus h or what's f of um you know what happens if you have other stuff in here it gets confusing and this is the thing when you're trying to find f of x plus h always always remember f itself is not a variable it's not a number you're not going to distribute so this is not equal to sad face this is not equal f of x plus f of h like you can't really distribute this okay so in general in general because if it happens to work out that way then that, you just found yourself a special case and i don't want someone finding me later and being like what it ended up working that way but in general this is not always true okay instead the way to think of f of x plus h or if you just have f of other stuff like it could just be anything okay in general is x plus h is your input so the reason in that video if you watched it the reason i like to change it like f of art like just following this thing it's basically telling me whatever my input is i'm going to cube it take the negative and then um, minus five times that thing itself so it the confusing part can be that it's x and x plus h here and people don't know what to do i've seen a lot of people do like um f of x plus h or f of x plus f of h and all kinds of stuff like this but conceptually if you're very clear with what inputs and outputs mean then this won't be so bad right it's literally telling me i am going to put my x plus h as my input so negative x plus h cubed minus five times x plus h from there you can work this out algebraically or simplify as you like but that is really what's going on you can think of f of your stuff 
and then just follow the rule, follow the rule. So, um, I've seen these types of questions in, um, like on the SAT as well, the SAT 1 and the SAT 2, mostly the SAT 2, but I thought I might clarify this, um, in general, as long as you're very clear with the fact that the function itself is giving you the rules of what to do, and X is your input. This, in this particular case, if you're using this as rules, um, it's just kind of like a placeholder, so, so anything is just, f of anything is just negative of that thing cubed minus five times that thing. It doesn't matter if it's x or y or anything else. It's just written this way because, like I said down the line, we will make ordered pairs of inputs with the corresponding values of f of x, which is your output, and plot those as points. So, but that's nothing to get scared of. So, I hope that this was a good little intro for you, and if you're not even in algebra, this might be interesting in general. It's just pairing inputs and outputs together. So, there's one more image or picture that I like to think of because some people get confused with, um, like, whether or not something is a function or not. So, aside from graphing, which we'll talk about, and using the vertical line test, which we'll also talk about, um, this idea here that, you know, multiple inputs can go to the same output, that that is okay. So, for instance, negative 6 and 3. Uh, so, I plug it into my function, and I get, let's say I get 12 for both of them. I don't really have a function right now, but let's say I get 12. So, if I plug in negative 6, it gives me 12. If I plug in 3, I also get 12. That is okay, because it satisfies the condition that there's exactly, that is not ambiguous. Each of these gets one clear output. They just happen to be the same output, but that's okay. As opposed to, this is where we come, where we run into problems, is if we have, uh, let's say I put in 2, and I get 0, and then I sometimes get 5, that's where things break. Because then, then if you can imagine, it's like, well, what do I actually output? It's just like, oh my gosh, I don't know, I don't know. So this is okay for functions, this is not okay for functions. And of course, it would be lovely if, um, you know, it would be lovely if everything was just very clear and unique. And that's a very particular type of function that we like. So let's say we have 1 gives me 3, 2 gives me 5, 3 gives me 7, etc, etc. Um, that's nice because each input has an output and they are all unique. So, this is okay for a function as well. So this is the only case where we run into problems. Okay, so if you can keep sort of this idea in your head, but really, like I said, the um, only thing that I really care about is this statement, so just let it kind of get absorbed for a bit, but each input has a clear output, and then when you're talking about plugging stuff in f of x, and by the way, the function itself, the letter here can be whatever you want it to be, it can be capital H or G, you can name whatever function makes sense, because this can be applied into other subjects and stuff, so, um, you know, if you're talking about waves, you can make letter, usually Greek letters are used, so you can have wave functions and all that stuff, so use whatever you want here, but this is the idea, it's the function of my input variable, and then I get an output. Okay, so I hope that this was a good intro, and let me know if you want to go into this more, I 